When we think of space exploration, it is normally the efforts of Russia and the U.S. that sit in the forefront of our mind. But since 2007, China has been making substantial and impressive movements of their own into exploring the moon with their program of lunar flights, and it has been hugely exciting to follow for enthusiasts of all things cosmic. The program began on October 24, 2007, and in the 12 years since, China has launched several spacecraft dedicated to exploring and investigating the moon. Each of these craft has gone by the name of Chang'e, in reference to the Chinese goddess of the moon, a major subject of several legends in Chinese mythology. It is said that she ingested an immortality pill before flying to the moon and becoming its goddess. And the Chinese have been doing some incredible things in orbit and on the surface of the moon. Chang'e 1 was launched in 2007, embarking on a 16-month long mission to map Earth's moon from orbit. The spacecraft circled between 62 and 125 miles high above the moon's surface, bouncing microwave signals off of the surface to produce the most high-resolution images that have ever been produced up till that point. Alongside its mission to map the moon, Chang'e 1 also surveyed the soil for helium-3, which scientists one day hope to use to power nuclear reactors. The mission, which cost $180 million and operated for just two years, was a complete success and, once the mission was over, the Earth-based controllers of the craft disposed of Chang'e by deliberately crashing the poor thing into the surface of the moon on March 2, 2009. Long live Chang'e 1! China's second lunar mission, Chang'e 2, was sent to the moon's orbit just seven months after Chang'e 1's kamikaze mission and returned with a high-res map of the moon's entire surface that made the once seemingly remarkable photos that had been produced look blurry and low definition by comparison. After wrapping up this primary mission, Chang'e 2 was, unlike its older brother, allowed to live and continues to explore to this day. It is expected to return to Earth sometime around 2029. But China wasn't finished yet, and the Chang'e program was in full swing, constantly trying to outdo the previous missions. Chang'e 3 was the first Chinese lunar mission to successfully land on the moon's surface, achieving its goal on December 14, 2013. From its perch, Chang'e 3 used an optical telescope to take images of the night sky sending the imagery back to Earth. Chang'e's three biggest claim to fame is the deployment of U-2, the first rover to deploy on the moon since 1976. Named after the goddess Chang'e's pet rabbit, U-2 used its six wheels to roll around the lunar surface, snapping a remarkable string of spectacular photos for three solid years before finally biting the lunar dust in 2016. But China's most substantial robotic spacecraft to date is Chang'e 4, launched as part of the second phase of China's lunar exploration program. On the 3rd of January 2019, Chang'e 4 became the first ever spacecraft to achieve a soft landing on Pink Floyd's preferred side of the moon, the dark side. Chang'e 4 had been originally built as a backup for Chang'e 3. But after Chang'e 3 was a success, Chang'e 4 was redesigned and rebuilt to serve a brand new purpose. Launching in December of 2018, Chang'e 4 landed on the dark side of the moon the following month and swiftly deployed its rover, U-2-2, to explore the moon's rocky surface. Chang'e 4 had several objectives, including the study of cosmic rays, observing the solar corona, measuring the chemical compositions of lunar soils and rocks, as well as monitoring lunar surface temperatures. But while all those are standard objectives for a spacecraft of this nature, Chang'e 4 had another rather more unique mission of a far more botanical nature. Contained within the craft was a substantial mini biosphere, stocked up with plant seeds that the team hoped would sprout while Chang'e 4 and U-2-2 explored the moon. Could China grow the moon's very first garden? Quite possibly and October 7th, it was reported that some of the seeds had actually sprouted. Chang'e 4 carried six different types of life forms, including the common weed, Arabidopsis thaliana, cotton, and potato. This could have been the future of gardening. An entire network of food production could have been launched on the lunar surface, but sadly, it did not go entirely to plan. 
only the cotton grew successfully. While it is only a minor success, it is still a significant one, as that cotton plant is now the first truly intergalactic plant in Earth's history. Sure, there are plants aboard the International Space Station, grown in order to study how growth changes in microgravity, and to help diversify the diet of astronauts in space. But these are frequently tended to by astronauts working aboard the space station. China's cotton plant was able to grow all on its own. Prior to this, the closest plant seeds that had ever come to visiting the moon was way back in 1971, when astronaut Stuart Rusa carried hundreds of seeds with him when he orbited the moon aboard Apollo 14. But these were planted here on Earth, becoming known as the infamous moon trees. The cotton seeds were hardy enough to grow in Chang'e 4's biosphere, unlike all the other organisms, but they still didn't meet a happy end. The lunar micro-ecosystem was unheated, meaning that just after one lunar day, that's roughly two weeks in Earth time, temperatures plunged to a minus 310 degrees Fahrenheit, instantly killing the small amount of cotton that had managed to grow. The idea of growing plants in space has a long history with varying degrees of success. The first organisms in space were a specifically developed strain of seed, launched 83 miles into space on July 9, 1946. These seeds were lost forever, but by the end of the same month, a separate mission successfully launched and recovered maize seeds. The experiment was followed up by two more similar missions, both equally successful, first with rye and then with cotton. In 1982, the crew of the Soviet Salyut 6 took things one step further. Using Phyton-3 experimental micro-greenhouse apparatus, grew some Arabidopsis aboard the station making it the first time plants had flowered and produced seeds in space. Since then, intergalactic experiments with plants have been few and far between, with occasions including the SVET-2, a brief botanical unit aboard the MER space station, successfully growing Brassica rapa in 1997, and the successful bloom of a sunflower aboard the ISS, thanks to the ongoing efforts of NASA astronaut Donald Pettit. As of 2010s, the desire for plant production in space has increased dramatically because as we move toward more long-term space missions, the consensus is that plants may be vital towards both feeding astronauts and providing psychological benefits. Wu Yanhua, the deputy director of Chang'e 4, has been suspiciously coy about the cost of the project. Initially simply saying it cost not much, he later expanded on this by saying the cost was close to building just 0.6 miles of subway. In China, the cost per 0.6 miles of subway built varies between 72.6 million and 172.4 million dollars. To put that into perspective, at the time of the making of this video, India's own proposed spacecraft, Chandrayaan-2, has yet to launch but has already cost 141 million dollars. Yanhua chalks up the cheap cost of Chang'e 4 to its origin as a spare for the previous craft, as this meant it was already mostly constructed. But this was almost not China's strangest outer space venture, as there was once talk that they were considering sending a small tortoise to the moon. This rather unempathetic mission would have been strictly one way, given that not only the temperatures severely plunge, but that the tortoise's oxygen supply would have run out in just 20 days. Fortunately, the mission was prevented, meaning that there were no unnecessary animal deaths in the name of intergalactic exploration that day. If only Laika had been as lucky. All human lunar exploration can be loosely divided into three distinct stages. One, exploration. Two, landing. And three, residence. The Chinese lunar exploration program has rolled out their own crafts in three distinct phases, with Chang'e 1 and 2 being Phase 1, orbital missions or exploration, while 3 and 4 were Phase 2, soft landers and rovers, or landing. With that in mind, what does the future of the Chang'e project look like? Phase 3, sample return or residence, concerns the spacecraft Chang'e 5 T1 and Chang'e 5. With the exploration and landing achieved, it is now time for the Chinese Lunar Exploration Program to work its way towards residence. Five, launched way back on October 23, 2014, was an experimental robotic craft sent out to test atmospheric reentry. 
After successfully looping behind the moon and returning to Earth, the team went ahead with developing the main spacecraft of Phase 3, Chang'e 5, which was originally intended to launch in 2017, with the goal of collecting a sample from the moon and returning it. This will make it the first lunar sample return mission since the Soviet Union's Luna 24, and will be only the third mission to retrieve samples from the moon in history. Frustratingly, the mission faced some pretty major setbacks after a failure of the rocket intended to carry Chang'e 5 led to doubt as to whether it would be able to handle transporting the craft. This mission is still to go ahead, but has been rescheduled to 2020. Much like how Chang'e 4 was initially developed as a backup for Chang'e 3, should the craft's mission go awry, the Chinese Lunar Exploration Program has been developing Chang'e 6 as a backup for Chang'e 5. Should Chang'e 5 be successful and need no backup, Chang'e 6 will be launched in either 2023 or 2024 as the first stage of Phase 4, Lunar Research Station. Chang'e 6 will explore the Moon's topography, compositions, and subsurface structure before returning to Earth with the South Polar Moon samples. There are two further crafts intended to launch as part of this phase, Chang'e 7 in 2023 and Chang'e 8 in 2027. 7 will be a lander that will thoroughly explore the South Pole on a hunt for possible usable resources, while 8 will verify the utilization and development of these resources as a part of a larger mission to determine the technologies necessary to construct a permanent lunar science base. Interestingly, 8 will have a similar secondary mission to 4, as it will also be transporting a small sealed ecosystem experiment, presumably based on the failures of Chang'e 4's own mini-garden thought has gone into figuring out how to grow more plants than just cotton and how to keep them alive longer. Do you think Chang'e 8 will successfully improve upon 4's mission and grow more than cotton? Let us know in the comments and if you like the video make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll be the first to know when a new video arrives. Thanks for watching.